previously on Dragon Ball Z. O okay, Mr. Dr. Ketchup, you'll get what you asked for. Me covering one of the greatest video games ever created. But first, State of Play just dropped, and I have to say it was actually spectacularly dull. It felt like attending a concert of a pop or rock star from the early 2000s. Like seeing someone who used to fill stadiums effortlessly now being reduced to a YouTube personality, streaming either poorly remastered versions of old hits, or a few overly polished new songs written and performed by others, targeting a younger audience that seems largely indifferent. Meanwhile, the older fans wash out of sense of duty and misguided loyalty, hoping for a spark of honesty and creativity, knowing full well it's a waste of time. One of those remaster hits this time happens to be one of the greatest of all time, Silent Hill 2, almost done being re-recorded by cheaply hired Belize musicians and adjusted for modern sensitivities and audiences. I used to be that older fan who hoped for a miracle, but now I've ascended to a higher dimension of disinterest and just watch out of boredom. However, after observing the new trailer and character reveals, I felt compelled to share my wisdom on why I think that SH2 Remake is something that should be largely ignored, since we can't actually stop it from happening. As a huge fan of the original four games, my perspective might be interesting to you. So here it is, the top 5 reasons why the SH2 Remake should be ignored. Number 1. It's a remake. <sighs> Yes, obviously, this is the most obvious one. Video game preservation is not even a topic anymore. Nobody cares. It's a standard now for whoever holds the rights to just willy-nilly remaster, remake or repurpose video games as many times as they want. I am 10 years too late for this discussion, but you can still hear the Dipshi Stroman argument from an Indian shill. I'm actually sad. The original is still going to exist. You are free to play it. Except that's not the point and it's not how it really works, at least not for the original Silent Hill series. Even if those games were available on Steam or PSN, or wherever, it's still reasonable to say that if you make a version of a game that is easily accessible, it will overshadow the existence of the original 95% of the time, regardless of its quality, especially for those without the point of reference, especially to the audience who don't suspect any kind of malice behind these projects. Just take a look at what Disney has been doing to their classics for the past 10 years. These were not remade just for the sake of money, but that's a topic for critical drinker, not me. Not everything remade is inherently bad, but look at it from a macro perspective. Again, I am way late to the party by saying this, but yes, you are basically supporting publishers' creative bankruptcy and encouraging predatory practices, such as abusing nostalgia, or worse, artistic works of creative minds behind these games. Ask yourself, do you think these corporations and publishers would be remaking anything if they actually had ideas for making something better? Would Bluebird team bother with remaking SH2 if they actually had any vision on how to make something as good or better? That's only the superficial reason though. I don't tend to look at video games as mere products. I could, but I don't want to because I want the people making them to consider them as something more. If you treat them as toys, publishers will focus on that part making you a toy. Which should not be the case because video games are a unique medium that can push expression and creativity to unexplored levels. Obviously, not every game is created with the same purpose and vision behind it, which is why you shouldn't treat them all like, again, products. It shouldn't be like re-releasing an older car model with better technology under the hood. Which brings me to the following, in my humble, 100% unbiased opinion. The remakes of anything should be ignored on principle, almost without exception. Unless it's being done by the person who created it. Each artist has a unique style and approach to their work, a remake, especially by a different creator, almost always fails to capture the nuances of the original creator's vision. Both in the sense of changing the quality of the colors in hue and shade, and in terms of the more evasive mood and melancholy, the remake is warmer, more inviting. It asks you to be in awe of it, to photograph it and to share it, to be a tourist in the forbidden land. Yeah. Yes, at a certain point, video games had an opportunity to actually be considered an art, and that was largely due to games like Silent Hill 2. You can't remake Silent Hill 2. It's like remaking Mulholland Drive, or Twin Peaks, or Lion King, or repainting Mona Lisa. It was lightning in a bottle. Not only is it still misunderstood by many, but it still also holds an abstract and significant artistic value. Unexplored depth, cultural importance, hidden symbolism, and vastly different interpretations. 
Silent Hill 2 was a technological achievement that changed the way video games were perceived and it was an example of how you can blend interactivity with storytelling to tell a deeply moving and relatable human story. It's also a product of its time. Everything wrong with it contributed to the overall emotions it provoked. Remakes run the risk of misinterpreting the original work's intent, themes or messages, leading to a less impactful or even misleading representation. Also, times have changed, man. In the last 20 years, people have been exposed to better gameplay and stories in other video games. So what can this remake actually bring to the table? Groundbreaking gameplay? Visuals? I doubt, but even if, what are the odds that technological improvements will contribute to the story, its meaning and its influence on video game culture? Art is often a reflection of the time in which it was created. Remakes may strip away the historical and cultural context that gives the original its significance and relevance. Would Dale Cooper's dream sequence be more impactful if they were in 4K and with artificial lightning? Is seeing Pyramid Head with more textures supposed to make him scarier? It's not how it works. The frightening part was the concept, not just the design. It really is like repainting the Mona Lisa. A. It's pointless and B. However you do it, it's not gonna have the same artistic impact because the world has already seen the Mona Lisa. The world has already seen the Red Pyramid thing. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. You're only doing it because you have nothing better and you want money. If you have the technology and knowledge to remake Silent Hill 2 and make it better, why not just make another Silent Hill game that surpasses Silent Hill 2? The whole world already knows what James did and how. You know you can't mess with how, what or why. And I doubt you even understand why. So what's the point? We already have examples of games being remade with better visuals and fans complaining that modernizing it only made it worse because it took away from the original artistic vision and atmosphere, which in some cases was the best part. I would argue that real fans would never want these profound games to be remade. None of them. Sequels, sure, maybe. Remasters with quality of life improvements, okay, maybe. But remakes from the ground up by some different people? Not necessarily. If you think you can make an existing work better, then use that vision and skill to make an original work that's better. In fact, the only people who actually want these remade are dimwits, people who never played the originals, or people being paid to spread and advertise this notion. Oh man, I hope they remake this game, it's gonna look awesome with new graphics, cause I totally care about it, and it's gonna introduce the new audience. But the only reason you want the new audience is to milk them for money. Those who would rather see the repainted version instead of the 14th century's original masterpiece are morons. Yes, it's an exaggeration of the artistic value of a f***ing video game, but the principle must exist in order to test a work against time, and time is one of the elements that decides if something can be elevated to the abstract artistic concepts. If you accept that it's okay for whoever to remake just whatever, you admit that the original wasn't good enough in the first place and you negate its artistic value. Art shouldn't be easily reproduced or replicated. I am not saying that remakes always result in something worse than the original. Far from it. It depends on the game and its objective. Take a look at the Resident Evil 2 remake. I like it, but I don't like that they made it. Why didn't you make something new? Again, it's just laziness, cause it's easier to retrace the steps of something that already exists. Although to be fair, it's so different that it barely resembles the original. Also, the original Resident Evil 2 strength was its gameplay. So it's possible to give it another iteration, improved by technology and make it work in a different way. On the other hand, people like Silent Hill 2 because of its atmosphere, meaning and depth of its story. Little stuff, which is something you can't easily recreate even if you follow the recipe perfectly. It's a multifaceted subjective experience and it's what made it great and even a slight change can ruin that and offend someone passionate about it. Rewriting a book about cooking is not on the same level as rewriting a book about people. And even then, the Resident Evil 2 remake was developed by Capcom's employee, people involved with the franchise, with two notable contributors from the 1998 original, and Capcom stated that they see it as a new entry in the series rather than a mere remake. They think that they made something superior, but they don't want to shit on the original and its legacy or make it irrelevant. Not to mention that the Resi was never considered a deep, thought-provoking flagship for video games as an artistic expression. I can't claim that Silent Hill 2 remake is not going to be an okay game, but I think it should be ignored regardless, and I made all of the above conjectures on two things. One, it shouldn't be made on principle, and two, where the project seems to be heading based on what I've seen in the trailers. Number two, Bluebird Team and Konami. 
I know that nobody seriously watches my videos or keeps track of the stuff I'm saying, but one of the reasons I tend to bring up the people behind the game I'm talking about is because pedigree matters. Track record matters. When you are bombarded with thousands upon thousands of similar products falsely advertised as the best thing you have ever seen, the only thing you can rely on most of the time is the track record. It stands to reason that a writer who wrote a great book will most likely write another one. It's a bit oversimplified and nobody is perfect, but chances are better than if you were to read something from someone who never wrote anything exemplary before. You see, these people already tried to make games that surpassed the original Silent Hill 2 and they failed each time. I can say this because I played their games and they were all mediocre and unscary. Layers of Fear is at best unremarkable and at worst a heavily scripted in-your-face haunted house simulator inspired by P.T. and Silent Hill. Which is exactly the same you could say about Blair Witch. Medium on the other hand is just a boring, poorly designed slog fest with a terrible ending. It has no stakes, no tension. It's a psychological horror without horror, nuance or subtlety. It manages to overstay its welcome despite being an 8 hour long game which is remarkable. Observer is a walking simulator with a few handheld puzzles and it's ok. It's called Observer, I, I guess that's fair. Radger Howard made it stand out. So, we take all of that into an equation and I don't even need to see the new trailer for Silent Hill 2 to be mean and say that these people shouldn't be remaking anything significant. They couldn't even remake their own games properly and, and make them scary. These guys specialize in a scripted haunted house amusement park scenarios and they proved with 5 games that they can't do better. They can create a good combat system or even a passable one. They can create good puzzles. They can create engaging moment to moment gameplay and the only thing they can do is rip off better stories while putting you on a railroaded haunted house ride. Hold on, I hear you say. Masahiro Ito and Akira Yamaoka and some Konami dude whose most notable work was we play are involved in this project. It's already wildly proven that Akira Yamaoka, a legendary video game composer, as legendary as he is, has little to no idea what Silent Hill was actually about and was just making music. On the other hand, Ito is just an artist, not a director or writer and somebody who hasn't really worked on a game for over a decade now. To be fair, he is the only good news about this remake and probably the only reason why the creatures looked ok in the trailer. He is the original creator of these monsters and probably the only person who should be allowed to put a fresh coat of paint on them. But even in this example, you can see that he is not allowed to follow his original vision. The real minds behind the story of Silent Hill 2 and the series in general were Takayoshi Sato, Hiroyuki Owaku and Masashi Tsuboyama. If you don't think that should matter because the original script already exists, and it's a remake, you are wrong. What about the stuff that isn't in the script or dialogue? What about symbolism, meaning, flashes of inspirations and secrets that were only known to one of those three or other team members? If you ever wrote and published something, you should understand this. Number 3. New Script and Modernization I got a letter. The name on the envelope said Mary. There's this really weird and wrong assumption that the original had bad dialogue and voice acting, or even worse, that it was bad on purpose. This is dumb on so many levels. No, the voice acting isn't bad and the dialogue is purposefully written in a certain way. There's only the one road. You can't miss it. It's supposed to be odd. Weird. Uncanny. You do realize that every character in the game is in some way mentally disturbed, right? Well, plus we've been through a lot in, in our lives no. that made us ready for that part. In mm -hmm. my case, I had I guess I really don't a very difficult first marriage that I'm going to made me suicidal at times uh, toward the end of it. So I really understood James's frame of mind toward the end of Mary's life, where she was giving him a hard time, probably, and mm -hmm. angry at life. And Guy Sihi did an excellent job which was to portray an everyday man being mentally in five different places at once, and Monica Horgan is even better and truly shines in her most iconic scenes where she portrays both Mary and Maria at once. Are you confusing me with someone else? <laughs> you were always so forgetful. Remember that time in the hotel? There's a reason why these people are so beloved by the fans. It's not what these characters say in these scenes, it's what they don't say. The dialogue invites the player to get into the character's heart and head and think about what the hell is happening inside. And this gets impactful when what's inside manifests outside. 
But the point here is not the voice acting, it's the script and its changes. I strongly recommend watching YMS video on the Lion King remake, because it's the best example of what happens when people who have no creative attachment to the original start adjusting the script and changing events. Blober team creative director and lead designer Mateusz Lennart already stated that they are aiming to modernize the combat and some set pieces stories were completely rebuilt. This apparently covers the dialogue and its delivery, so to assess this, let's turn to the trailer we got. Excuse me, I... Oh, I, I'm sorry, I... I... Oh, no, it's just... okay. I didn't mean to scare you. Excuse me. <gasps> I'm sorry, I, I was just... It's okay, I didn't mean to scare you. It's kind of hard to explain, but... Is it dangerous? Maybe. I think you should stay away. This town, there's something wrong with it. Is it dangerous? Maybe. I'll be careful. I'm not lying. No, I believe you. It's just, I guess I really don't care if it's dangerous or not. I'm going to town either way. I'll be careful. I'm not lying. I guess I don't really care if it's dangerous or not. I'm going either way. Long gone are the weird David Lynch-like vibes, and instead we have modern age natural delivery, with flat or exaggerated inflections. In the first trailer, James looked memeable, but now he looks too young and handsome, and sounds like the actor has no idea that he is supposed to be portraying a deranged person. Literally and mentally lost. So he is not um, an action hero by any means. Um, he is just a guy who is a little lost at the top of this game. And uh, in, in a sense of, um, he, he is to, to a greater extent in a, in a bewildered state. Um, so it's very interesting um, charting his, his journey. I hope you are eager to watch this guy looking bewildered this whole game. Angela looks odd. I like how the trailer spoils that he is actually disturbed and abused, which is something you could miss in the original or at least be confused about if you were not paying attention or read the subtext. In an interview, they stated that they made her chubby, cause that's somehow supposed to be in line with the appearance of sexually abused victims. Not only is this wrong, retarded and offensive in a way, but hello, subtlety, where are you? It's really funny, cause they defend this character design with, um, she now actually looks her age, she is supposed to be in her 20s, you know? While the original developers making of commentary specifically stated that they made her look older on purpose. Behold, one, two, hit, and a finishing move. It took you 20 years to rip off Resident Evil 4 Konami. Well done. In the original, James looks uncomfortable while fighting and shooting. This new one even kills with the fury of a thousand goats. In the original, he stops and thinks if he just killed something, perhaps human or demonic. In the trailer for the remake, they made a cut here for some reason. Notice the remarkable camera movement and body language of the original. What happened to the camera work in video games, man? Maria is sanitized, of course. What's with the big head? Can you imagine anything more wrong? Maria is a physical being born from sexual desire. No, you can have a naked tummy, that will offend nobody nowhere. No. I can stop analyzing right here. This is where everything falls apart and you can already tell it's over. This is a choice made to accommodate some imaginary people who would have a problem with a literal sexual object being dressed like one. She's supposed to be sultry, sexual constantly teasing James cause that's her character and it's her character cause James subconsciously wants that. Subconscious means that it's not something you want or think about. It's something buried deep within that you don't even know that you crave. This is not about level or censorship. It literally hurts the story and its nuances and it's disrespectful. So far it's a dress and a big giant head but who knows what else is there or missing. You don't know that the original is teasing the player as well. Not just James, you don't know it's actually Christina Aguilera's outfit and that by this point it's iconic. I don't know, everything I've seen so far already seems to stray from the original vision and it perfectly exemplifies the priority of the developers, which is not to preserve, like they desperately try to articulate. It is to make it better, by changing it to what they see as better, disregarding the original vision. Hello, sex and death. Sex and death? Hello, shaking human. Shake. 
human's heart. Deeply. He was not talking about James when he said that. Somebody pointed it out that in the original nurses were showing off too much skin. Can you even start to comprehend how disturbing this is? How wrong? How, how disrespectful to the artist and the original story it is? And uh, if we want to uh, scare or shake or touch the users or spectators, uh, then we have to uh, think about, you know, sex and death deeply. Girls wear skirts. Sex exists. People talk about it and use it for various purposes. For example, telling a story. If you don't like the original story and its artistry and the portrayal of the characters, why don't you make your own story with your own characters, you fucking hex? As for the gameplay, Resident Evil Combat aside, we get a lot of modern game design idiocy. Like, for example, UI intruding on the game all the time and informing you that you are playing the game constantly. Why does a video game need to inform me that I entered a Brookhaven hospital? Can I, like, see the entrance or the sign of the building, or maybe infer that from the stuff I'm looking at? Like, this map. Why does the UI need to inform me that I'm looking at the hospital map when on the map it says that it's the hospital map? What's with the sunlight? What's with the vignette? Why, oh god, why does it have to have the vignette? If I got hit by anything, it's fair to assume that my health has been compromised. This was annoying even 15 years ago in other games, and it looks cheap. Yes, in the original you can pause the screen and the game, but there is nothing wrong with that, because it separates the necessary video game mechanics from the gameplay and the atmosphere. They don't blend in this weird mishmash that ruins the immersion for no reason. I know that this is kinda expected now, and it comes with the territory of it being a modern third-person game, but hmm, um, how about, I don't know, you don't make it a third-person game, or better yet, don't remake it at all. What's with the bright sunlight, the streets looks too clean, the fox looks like smoke, why is James following the blood trail and crawling like a commando under this house? Oh my god, he's going to emote and talk to himself and the player constantly. I'm, I'm curious, do you really think that they are going to keep the same hard puzzles and methods for solving them? Uh, specifically the one in the hospital that stops 99% of people in front of a door. Take a look at this! Wow, this is like a foreshadowing or something, but, but why? Hello, son! In the original first four games, creatures are attracted to light and sound. Here they ignore it. Oh, wow, a deluxe edition content. Well, I guess if I get to smother my wife for smothering me with her pesky sickness, I guess it's better to do it while wearing pyramid heads, head on me, head. I give up. Fans of the original work quite certainly have strong emotional connections to it. A remake that changes too much or too little can lead to disappointment and a sense of betrayal. Betrayal! Also, it's a game that tries to recreate Silent Hill 2 again, this time literally which makes it the fifth major Silent Hill installment that wants to recreate the success and the psychology behind Silent Hill 2. At least Tom Hewlett tried to rip off Silent Hill 2 by making his own game. These hacks are just retracing the steps and modernizing the game to make it better. They know fans are going to hate it, and it's why they are trying to express so much in interviews and in trailers that its goal is to preserve the original vision. No, it's not what you are doing. It's what MGS3 Remake seems to be trying, by making the same game with better graphics. It's still annoying and creatively bankrupt and they're milking the fans, but if you are still forced at gunpoint to do it, this is how it should be done. Since 2005, Silent Hill was and still is being developed by the people who have nothing to do with the original work. Konami, if you really wanted to remake this, why not just put the band together and see what happens? Hmm, maybe, because most of these people consider what they made already perfect, and they rightfully don't want to shit on their own work and their fans. These two don't make a difference. Akira Yamaoka doesn't care because he gets to sell his OST, and Ito finally has something to do other than tweeting. When I was researching Gene Wolfe for my video, I found an interview where he was asked about one of his older books and if he would like an opportunity to rewrite it, and he replied that doing such a thing would be a disservice to an art. You learn new writing techniques, and you learn new ways of telling a story, so it would be impossible for him to write the same story in the same way, cause after so much time in between, he is basically not the same writer anymore, and it would be disrespectful to the people who actually like the novel he wrote. It's a testament to his own improvement, and it's what in hindsight makes his work interesting for academic study. I am pretty sure what the answer would be if he was alive and we could ask him, hey, would you like if some dipshit from Poland rewrote the book of Junior Sun so it can be more accessible to a new audience? 
And no, the Nightland doesn't count because the story retold is just that, a story retold. The original is still vastly different and unique and almost incomprehensible. It was also never considered a remarkable influential work of artistic value, despite its awesomeness. Silent Hill series has for all intents and purposes ended in 2005, and I'm just wasting my time here and maybe even yours. I apologize for even talking about this. Will I play it? No. Is there something that they can do to make me wanna buy it or pirate it? No. Would I play it if I'm paid to do so? But yes, but that's only because I'm poor. Would I admit it's great if it is? Yes, but I would never recommend it even if it happens to be the best video game ever created and it won't be. But even if, it will still be a video game while the original is still going to be a work of art that you are pushing under the rug for a short term buck. Thank you for watching.